you might recognize what phone I have in my hands right here. And you're right. This is the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Now, you're also kind of wrong, though, because this is not the iPhone 13 Pro Max. In fact, this isn't even a phone at all, at least not for the duration of this video. This is a gaming device, aka my portable console. And I've played a whole lot of games on this powerful little portable console of mine. And in this video, we're going to get at the exact gaming situation with the iPhone 13 Pro to see just how good of a gaming device it actually is. Okay, you ready? Well, it doesn't really matter because we're starting right now anyways. And we're going to start with what exactly the iPhone is capable of. I'm talking the maximum extent of the iPhone 13 Pro's gaming power and the best the iPhone can do when it comes to gaming, aka gaming at 120 frames per second. This is possible for the first time on any iPhone ever. You know, because this is the first iPhone ever with a 120 hertz display. And we'll talk about the iPhone screen itself later. Right now we're talking power and performance, and 120 frames per second gaming is the absolute height of it with the iPhone 13 Pro. I know you can't really see it, and you've probably heard this in another video, but 120 hertz is next level smooth. Like, if you've ever used a device with 120 hertz, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you haven't though, then just take my word for it, okay? At the heights of gaming performance with the iPhone 13 Pro, the experience you get is truly great. And the iPhone is truly powerful to be able to perform the way it does. Now, at the same time though, in the real world, you're not guaranteed to get this performance with the iPhone. Why? Well, even though the iPhone does have 120 hertz variable refresh rate now, not every game actually runs at 120 frames per second. In fact, most games you're gonna play don't support it yet, so that's kind of a bummer. If you could play every single game on the iPhone at 120 frames per second, then that'll be incredible. But that's just not the case, and we'll talk more about this later. But the couple games I've shown you so far though do support it, and trust me, when you play these games in person, they feel and look incredible. And apart from power and the performance the iPhone has, the other main reason for this, as you know by now, is the screen. The display. It's a 2.8K AMOLED screen with a weird iPhone resolution of 2778 times 1284. That's about 458 pixels per inch, and it's very sharp, just like the screen on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Now, it's not just like the iPhone 12 Pro Max's screen though, I mean it's not exactly the same screen. For one, it's about 27% brighter, which means you can play your games in the brightest of situations, even direct sunlight. The display gets really, really bright. It goes up to about 1000 nits of brightness with standard non-HDR content, aka 99% of games you're going to be playing and it's one of if not the brightest displays on a smartphone out right now and that's great now it's not always going to be so bright though i found that when you're gaming for a while or just doing anything intensive that's going to make the phone get pretty warm almost hot the iphone 13 pro will force reduce your brightness for you to somewhere around here i'll say it loses about 20 maybe 30 percent of brightness and you won't be able to manually bring it back up yourself you're gonna have to get the phone to cool down and then the brightness will go back up automatically Still though, this isn't a big deal in the real world, well at least for me. The display is still more than bright enough in most settings you're going to use it in, and I'm personally always in some air conditioned area, and the iPhone barely, barely ever gets hot in those conditions, so the screen stays as bright as I need it to be 98% of the time, and that's great. Still though, the great brightness isn't the best part of the display, not in my opinion. The best part of the display I'll say is easily the refresh rate. Like you already know, the iPhone has a variable refresh rate that goes up to 120 hertz at its smoothest and highest and down to 1 hertz at its lowest. It basically adjusts the refresh rate based on what's currently on the screen. This is great because it still performs optimally and it's very powerful. So when you're playing a game that supports 120 hertz, the screen will be at 120 hertz. And it's also very good for battery life because when you're playing a game that only goes up to 60 hertz, the display won't be wasting energy by being on 120 hertz. It'll be at 60 hertz just like the game. This is pretty smart and since the battery of the iPhone 13 Pro Max is pretty good, then it very Variable refresh rate must be working pretty well, but we'll talk about battery life later, okay? Right now we're talking about the iPhone's display, and overall, it's very, very good, in general and for gaming. The only bad part of the display though, and um, easily the worst part of the display, is actually not the display itself, but the part where the display should be, but isn't. Of course I'm talking about the notch. As you've seen so far in the video, the notch cuts into most games you're going to play when you're playing full screen, and it's the same as all other iPhones and Android phones or any other phone that has notches. I think the notch way is objectively not the way to go, but it's also not the absolute biggest of deals, you know? You probably already have your opinion of the notch though, and you should let me know what that is in the comment section below. If you're on the fence though, and you're not sure whether the notch really bothers you or not, well, you're watching me play these games, and you're seeing how the notch affects them, so just put yourself in my shoes, and imagine you're the one playing these games, and ask yourself, does it bother me that a notch is cutting into my gameplay, or is it something that didn't even cross my mind until Paul brought it up? 
Well, hopefully that gives you your answer. Anyways, long story short, as far as displays go, this is a great one, and it's easily and obviously the best iPhone display ever made at the time of making this video. Oh, and at the same time, it's also the biggest display on any iPhone ever. And what is that mentions, it's also just the biggest iPhone ever, in general. Now, that might not be the best for one-handed usage, but it's very good for gaming. Now, at the same time, though, again, it's also not quite the best for gaming. I'd say with gaming, bigger screens are better. I remember reviewing this as a portable console, and truth is, I always choose to game on my iPad compared to my iPhone, even if the games on both run just as smoothly as each other. Now, if you really want to treat this as a portable console, like I said, like something like the Nintendo Switch, then yes, you could connect it to a monitor with HDMI, but you're going to need a dongle. And not even one of those USB-C dongles. Now, many people have those these days, but those are not going to work with any iPhone. You know, right now, you're going to need a Lightning to HDMI dongle, and I don't have that. I don't even want to have that, you know? The other alternative, I guess, is streaming your game to a smart TV or something like that. But then you're going to want to play with a controller because, you know, you can't be looking at the iPhone, pressing the iPhone screen while you're streaming to the TV, if you're looking at the TV. You know what I mean? Also, with some games, like stuff like shooter games that require quick reaction times plus precision, you're not going to want to deal with the input lag from the streaming, you know? But still, the screen will be much bigger, though, like you want. And you also will probably be using your living room speakers and sound system, so things can sound as good and loud as you want. Speaking of sound and speakers, how are they on the Apple portable console itself? Well, as far as speakers go, the ones on the iPhone 13 Pro Max are pretty good overall, both in terms of loudness and clarity. They're still phone speakers though, but they're actually close in loudness compared to the speakers on the iPad Pro. And as far as phone speakers go, or rather as far as portable console speakers go, the iPhone does a very loud and good job. I don't have the Nintendo Switch or any other actual portable consoles here, you know, they don't really make them so much anymore, it seems. But basically, all the ones they have made that I know of don't get this loud and don't sound this good. Apple's portable console has very good speakers, well, considering the size and all. Now, when I'm actually gaming though, most of the time, I don't use the speakers on the iPhone. And that's because a great thing about this device, and a great thing about smartphones in general, is the fact that you can use Bluetooth headphones to game if you like. Even Sony's own flagship headphones will connect via Bluetooth to Sony's own next-gen flagship console. But it will connect to the iPhone, and you can not enjoy your games with great sound without using a wire. I know this is something you already know, but that's pretty great and convenient when you think about it strictly in terms of gaming. Now something else that's pretty great with the iPhone in general and in regards to gaming is battery life. As far as battery life goes, well, long story short, the iPhone 13 Pro Max has just about the best battery life compared to any other popular flagship phone. Maybe even any phone period. Actually, let me not say that. Uh, the phones out there that are made strictly to last as long as possible, like they're made strictly for battery life. And uh, I can't think of one of those right now. In fact, I don't know of any of those really. But as far as the devices I know, the iPhone 13 Pro Max has easily the best battery life in the world. So with a great battery life, you're going to be able to play games for a couple hours. Uh, you still can't game all day or anything. I mean, gaming is pretty intensive. But compared to just about all of their phones out there, you'll be able to play a lot of games for a significantly longer time. Another reason why you'll be able to play a lot of games is because of the storage. I think this is important to touch on because if this really is a gaming device, then you want to be able to open it up and have a bunch of games installed and ready to be played. It's just like it's nice to have a PS5, but you want to turn it on and have your games there to be played, right? If your PS5 doesn't have any games, then it's basically useless as a gaming device, right? Same thing goes for any gaming device. Now, as you can see, I have a couple games on my PS5. Uh, just a couple though, not a lot. These are the games I'm really playing right now. Uh, I don't have all my other games installed. Not because I don't want to though, but because I have no extra space. The four, five, six games I have on my PS5 is the max amount of games I can have on my PS5. And that's with a one terabyte SSD. These console games are just so large. And I also have other stuff like Netflix, Hulu, and some screen recordings here and there. But still, you just can't have so many games on your console by itself. Unless you're playing strictly indie games, and even those are pretty big these days. But if you want to have a bunch of games on your console, then you're going to have to get an external hard drive or something. With the iPhone 13 Pro Max though, the cheapest storage configuration you can get is 128 gigabytes. And with 128 gigabytes on a smartphone, you can install a whole lot of games. I mean, let's check and let's see how many I have over here, okay? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I mean, see, it's already more than the amount I have on the PS5. And I have a whole lot of photos and videos taking up space on the phone, as well as many other apps as well. Now, yes, on so my PS5, I do get to play games like Apex, Call of Duty, FIFA, and on the iPhone, we have games like Temple Run, you know, or the mobile Call of Duty and uh, stuff, 
Um, but that's not the point though. The point is that storage space goes a longer way for gaming on phones. But still though, that is a good point, you know? With a gaming device, it doesn't really matter what the specs are and what the hardware is capable of. Like, it does matter, but it doesn't really matter that much if you don't have the actual fun games you want to play, right? So what kind of games can you play on the iPhone? Well, not console games like Apex. Um, actually, that's not technically true. As you can see, I'm playing Apex on the iPhone right now, actually. But I'm not technically playing Apex on the iPhone. You probably know what I mean, but uh, let's talk about it later, okay? But yeah, if you're hoping to play console-type games on your iPhone, well, then prepare to be disappointed. You're not going to be able to. Now, you will be less disappointed than you would have been in the past, though, because now more and more console-level games have come out for the iPhone. Uh, they're not console-level games exactly, but they're as close as you're going to get, at least for now. I'm talking games like Call of Duty Mobile, which is the closest thing to actual Call of Duty, uh, now with Battle Royale and even Zombies actually. And for basketball gamers, you probably love playing 2K on your console, wherever you play on. Uh, you can also play that on your iPhone, you know? This one is actually legit too. Like I almost can't even call it a mobile version. It feels like they actually try to bring the full 2K experience to your smartphone. And they did a pretty good job. Now, every gamer out there has probably played GTA at one point in their lives. And you can also do that on your iPhone, but of course it's not gonna be GTA 5 or anything. It's gonna have to be one of the old GTAs that's available in the App Store. You see what I mean? If you're looking for these kind of games to play, the games that you play on console already and you would absolutely love to see on an actual portable console, then the iPhone 13 Pro Max and any other smartphone for that matter would be a disappointment to you. Now, if your standards aren't so high though, and you're willing to play a lot less technical and not console level games, then there's technically a lot of games for you to choose from. You've already seen a couple so far, then there are the good old reliable phone games like Temple Run, Subway Surfers, and just all the other phone games you can just search for in the App Store. And they all run exceptionally well and smooth, and some of these are really fun and addicting as well, like I won't even lie, but still, these are phone games. You know, they're cool, but it'd suck if you told me that these are the only games that I could play on my portable console, you know what I mean? Now, apart from the App Store, there's another place you can get games, and these are better games, actually. One's more worthy of being on a portable console, and that place is Apple Arcade. Now, it's gonna cost you about $5 a month to play these games, but these are actual, actual big boy games, like actual console level games. Oh, actually, I'm lying. Uh, many of these games, honestly, could probably just be in the regular App Store. They're not really hot titles, if I'm being honest. Uh, I mean, some are pretty cool, like Spider, for example. This one is very console-esque and almost console level, and it does feel like a big boy game. But most of the other games in Apple Arcade aren't like this. You just have a couple that are like this, you know, not enough in my opinion. Now, more and more games are being added to Apple Arcade as time goes on though. Like NBA 2K22 for example. Like I said before, this one is also console-esque and it's an Apple Arcade. Actually, in fact, this one is like a console game that was successfully ported to the iPhone. It's actually pretty cool. But don't expect to find other equivalent games in Apple Arcade like FIFA, GTA 5, or Spider-Man or Halo, or Apex Legends, or etc. If you want to use your iPhone for gaming and have it as your only gaming device, there are a whole lot of games that you get to choose from, yes, but there are a whole lot of great games that are currently out on other devices and consoles that you're gonna miss out on. And you really, really have to make sure that your games you actually want to play, either on the App Store or Apple Arcade. And to be honest, that's the worst part about gaming with the iPhone 13 Pro Max, and actually any other mobile device for that matter. Just not having games you actually want to play. Now, with this being said though, there are other ways to play. And you know how I just said that you can't play console games on the iPhone and stuff? Well, that's kinda not true, because I'm playing a console game right now. This is Apex Legends, and this is stuff I said we're gonna talk about later. I'm sure you probably already know, um, yes I'm playing Apex on the iPhone, but I'm actually, actually playing Apex on the PS5. This is the feature Sony calls Remote Play, and with it, you can control your PS5 or PS4 over the internet. With this though, and other stuff like this, you're not actually playing the game on your portable console iPhone device, you know? You can't give the iPhone itself much credit, because technically what you're doing is really streaming the game, or well, at least it's closer to streaming the game, right, than actually playing on your iPhone. Anyways, yes, this is cool, but you need a whole PS5 or PS4 to make it work. Not to talk of pretty good internet as well, so the experience itself won't be awful. And even then, there's still a limit to things. Like, you're not gonna be streaming games with no MP lag at 2K, 120 frames per second. It's just not gonna happen. And this applies to not just Sony remote play but just about all other game streaming services right now for the purposes of this video i guess i probably have to mention it but it doesn't really count you know not really now there's another way to game though and this way it definitely counts and it's pretty unique as well and i'm talking about ar gaming augmented reality 
Now, this all works through the cameras and the lighter sensor at the back, and it's really cool, actually. Now, there aren't so many games out there, though, that have embraced AR and have AR versions of the games. There are actually a lot more games with 120 frames per second support compared to this. So in the real world, if you're like me, you'll only play AR games because they're AR games and you want to see the AR feature in action. Not because you actually want to play the game itself. Like, there's not really any AR-based game that is an AR game in itself that's just well-built and is good. Not because it's AR, but because it's good. I guess something like Pokemon Go would be an exception, but I don't really play this and um, that's not really AR. I mean, it is now, but it's, it's not the best and it's not so realistic in the way it handles things, in my opinion. Still though, long story short, AR gaming is a pretty cool feature for a portable console. Okay, now, I'd say we've talked about just about everything we need to talk about when it comes to using this phone as a gaming device. And as you've seen so far, I was actually definitely serious when I said I was going to review this as a portable console, like an actual portable console. And at times, you might have felt I was being a little harsh, you know, and I completely feel you, you know. I was comparing this to the PS5, and that's crazy, you know, one's a PS5 and one's in an iPhone, right? That's an outrageous comparison. But you see, to me, the iPhone 13 Pro and just other phones that are out right now, these phones and the way we use them when it comes to gaming, it just reminds me of the Game Boys of the past. I mean, gamers used to love these things. And if you played on one of these before, then you're probably smiling right now because you still love it. But see, the kids of nowadays that are around the same age as the Game Boy players of the past, like you may be, their Game Boy or their portable console is always in their pocket or in their hands and they're not always using it to play games. But when you want to though, the iPhone 13 Pro Max is a great choice and plays the games that it does very well. You can always just get the Nintendo Switch though. You know, it's a lot cheaper and stuff. So, yeah. Hi, Paul, you have one reminder. A reminder called get ready for the birthday photo shoot for Tuesday at 4.35 a.m. You can see if you have any updates like these at any time by asking, what are my notifications?